So my brother brought me this quilt and asked me if I could fix it for him. He basically wanted me to put a new backing on it. And after looking at it and checking out the quality of it or the condition of it, I decided that I was going to do a complete quilt restoration and he doesn't know that. And he's wondering why it's taking me so long. So I'm going to document this and give it to him just to kind of let him know what was done to this quilt. Um, this quilt has been patched once before. These blue patches were an old patch. And when they patched it, they sewed through the entire quilt to do the patch. So there is a lot of like this where the fabric has torn, which is very common in a quilt. Um, a lot of these fabrics, now this quilt is probably from the 60s or 60s or 70s, I'm guessing. Some of these fabrics, like look at this one. That looks very 60s. And it was all just scraps. So, but some of these fabrics, like this green one, for instance, is almost like a silk. And they're just falling apart. So my first step was to take all the little, here you can see, all the little yarn, because it was a hand-tied quilt, and I took all those off. And then I took the backing off. Now the backing was like this. This is a sheet. So someone used the sheet as a backing. And here you can see this was a patch and they just sewed right through the whole thing. And some of these I'm leaving, this patch like this, and some of them I'm completely taking apart. So once I got the backing off, or as much as I could get off, this is what was left. Look at this batting in here. It's like curdled after how many years, 50, almost 60 years of, of washing or whatever. And here's the backing material it was an old sheet. And so I took all the backing out and cleaned it up. Look at my floor here. Cleaned it up the best I can. Doggy. And um, then I started with the repairs and I started with the most simple ones first. But some I could not save. There's just some fabrics that were too difficult to save. Um, they were too far gone. And so I put some patches in. This is a patch I did. And I tried to match. These are fabrics that I had from old quilting projects. And basically I just sewed them in here. And this one is a double. And you can see the old fabrics I left on the back here. These are the old fabrics. And like they're just falling apart. There wasn't anything I could do to fix those. So in the ones, here's another one where I put a material in, just put a patch in. And this is the green fabric that was there. It's just it had too many tears in it to fix. Some of these fabrics are getting very fragile. It's like this green one is very silky and it wasn't really torn, but this seam here between this other fabric and this one was torn. And so what I did is I put some um, very lightweight um, stabilizer on the back here. And I'm hoping that, I mean, you can hardly feel it. Like when you feel it, it's so lightweight, it's really nice. But it glues the fabric together and it kind of glues all the seams together. And then I just took a zigzag stitch and I zigzagged along where the two fabrics were. And this, like, this was repaired once before, not by me. And the whole fabric is just starting to tear. In every green square, I'm thinking about putting this interfacing, fusible interfacing 
on the back of it. And that seemed to work Patches pretty well. That were done before this. And you can see the backing fabric is still on here. I haven't decided if I'm gonna take these off and fix them yet. But I cut this apart. There's that green fabric again. And um, pulled out as much of the interfacing, or not the interfacing, the quilting material as I could. You can still see it's like sewn into the seams to try to get it really flat. I mean, this quilt is never gonna be perfectly flat unless I take every one of these patches out. And there are a lot of these patches here. Here's another one. You can see the, here's the quilting material sewn into that seam. And these are the most minuscule stitches you've ever seen. Because I'm sure whoever did this was having a hard time feeding it through their sewing machine. This I completely took off. So in here, got all the batting out, got all the stitches out of it, um, took the backing off of it. Now you can see this is really torn here. So, but this, it's ripped, but all the fabric is there. So I think I'm gonna just put a piece of fusible interfacing behind this and I'll see how that does. If it doesn't do very well, I'll take it out and patch it. Um, this one is okay. This one is ripped down here. So if I were to just put this one in, then I'm thinking of putting a half patch here. And I don't know if I want to put this one in or if I want to completely replace this patch and this patch and make a new patch. I do have a patch that didn't fit somewhere else that will fit here. And um, we're gonna end up seeing, I, I haven't made up my mind. I stopped at 11 o'clock last night and I just couldn't decide if I wanna put this back. There's a lot of this blue fabric in here and I thought it would be nice to patch it correctly instead of patching it this way um yeah i don't know about this either we'll see what it looks like once i fuse it and see what happens this one now this one's pretty good it looks like this fabric fared better in the middle of this again is a silky i'm guessing this was a t-shirt or a dress shirt at one time that's what it feels like but when it's on the edge it really didn't fare well. So there are a lot of these ripped seams throughout. I mean, here's another one. The green fabric strikes, strikes again. So what I'm gonna do is put some interfacing behind this. This is a pretty good cotton, this one. And it's old. This is a pretty good cotton too. I might interface all those and really just kind of give them some stabilization so they're not quite so vulnerable. Um, but once you get inside the quilt, like more toward the middle, you can see these fabrics have held up pretty well. I mean, for a quilt this old, it's not that bad. So here's another patch. I've left all the quilting material in here and um, it's really, I mean, if you look at the back, there's a big old patch on the back of it. So I think once I get all the fixes done, I have to go back and decide if I want to take these off. Well, and that's yeah, where I am with so all far. the repairs on the quilt project. Um, I was able to fix a lot of the seams, I did a lot of this, I did fusible interfacing on the back and then I did a zigzag seam on the other side just to kind of give it reinforcements. I didn't want to replace all the old fabrics. So this is a new patch here and this one next to it, some of the bigger patches. This green fabric is a patch. And if you look, I'm trying to find a corner here for you. On the back, you can see 
where some of these, I did this fusible interfacing for the whole back of it just to give some of these fabrics that are so thin and some of these seams some stability because some of them I just you know if you just tug on it the wrong way I'm afraid it's going to to pull apart and that's what I don't want after all this time so I gave it a really good once over and this is the only area that I left with this seam. And it's this pink fabric, and the, it's not real puffy. So I'm just gonna leave it. I ended up taking all the other ones out and fixing them. So that wasn't as bad as I thought it was, because a lot of them I could just sew back together again. Here's another where I reinforced that fabric. That green fabric is either been replaced or reinforced through the whole quilt. So there we go. That took me, I don't know how many hours, I got my hours tallied. So now I'm gonna go to the fabric store and see if I can find some um, backing fabric and a fabric for the border. It's quilt restoration and, and to put uh, the backing we'll on and the quilting material. And here I've got the backing material here, and then I have a layer of quilting material. This is an all natural cotton batting. And then the quilt is here. And I had to take this to work because I don't have enough floor space to lay this out. And then you, you lay out the backing material and get it real flat, and then you lay out the quilting material and get it real flat, and then the quilt on top of it, and then you pin it. And I've got pins like every other block. Here you can see the pins. And I did throw that throughout the whole thing. Now what I'm going to do is go through and tie, hand tie the entire quilt. Because it was a hand tied quilt, I'm not going to machine quilt it. So I'm going to restore it back to be a hand tied quilt. Nala, are you helping me? Huh? Are you helping me? Yeah, you're making sure that yarn doesn't go anywhere. Silly cat. So I wanted to give you a little demo on how I do this tying for the quilt. Um, I've got some yarn. It's just basic yarn that I got from uh, Hobby Lobby and it matches the backing material. And I've got one of these upholstery needles. Um, I like the hooked needle. Uh, you can get these in packs at like Hobby Lobby. They have a bunch of different needles in there, a bunch of different sizes, but this is really nice because you can kind of get it through at the right angle. And then I thread the, the yarn into the needle and I use one of these cheap, I don't even know if you can see that. Can you see that? They're needle threaders. You stick this through the hole and then put the yarn through the threader and then pull it through because it's really hard to thread a needle with yarn. Um, especially, I needed a needle that would go through the material too. So what I do, and I'm trying to do this so you can see it. I'm trying to follow the holes that were already there. And some of them I can't see, but you can feel around as I go in and through, and I make sure I get all the way through, and then I just pull it through. And I have this really long, because I do several all at once. And you pick a length, and then do a, tie it, and then I do a surgeon's knot, which means you bring this through twice, and then tie it. And that's all there is to it. Um, once 
I'm done, I'll go through and I'll cut them all to about that length. And they, they, they'll, they'll um, get all curly and with use and, uh, but hopefully they won't come untied. If so, it's easy enough to tie them back up again. So that's how you hand tie a quilt. So here we are, I got the whole thing tied. So I put a tie in the middle of every square. I think that's gonna be enough, but I haven't trimmed them yet. They're still just a little bit long, but I'll go through and I'll trim them all. And then I went ahead and put on a binding. And I just did your basic quilt binding. This was a two and a half inch strip. Uh, I ironed uh, wrong sides together in half and I just made it, oh here, I've got some over here. Here I made my own binding, just ironed it right sides or wrong sides together. So this is then one and a quarter inches. And I put that along the edge here and sewed it quarter inch here and then I'm going to turn it over and then fold it under like that and then what I'll do is I'll what's called stitch in the ditch stitch right here with the machine I'm not going to hand sew it and then the binding will be done and so the corners I don't think get this back you kind of sew them like this and then when you turn them, you have a nice mitered corner. I'll press that a little better. So right now I'm just going around the whole thing and kind of finger pressing these seams open. And then I'm gonna go around and sew the whole thing. Then I have to take all the pins out because I still have some pins in here. Trim all these. So they're a little shorter. I'll probably go to about there. It's about half an inch or so. And then this quilt will be done. So next time you see me, I will have a done quilt. Well, here it is all done. As you can see, I finished putting the binding on which was a challenge because this quilt is not square. And there's the backing fabric. I think it's a real nice complement to all the reds. You don't realize how many reds are in this quilt until you put red next to it. So since it's my brother's quilt, I wanted to do something a little more masculine. So there it is, quilt restoration complete. Quilt time on this restoration was 25 hours of work time. And that's a wrap. So I hope you have fun with your quilt restoration project. This was a little more challenging and a little easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, a little challenging in that I had to think outside the box for a lot of things, but I think it really turned out good. I love the weight that it is now. I think it's going to be a really comfortable quilt. It's nice and soft and it's going to last hopefully another 60 years. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Sharon's Home and Garden Channel. I hope you enjoyed this quilt restoration video as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. And I hope that it inspires you to pull that old quilt out of your closet and give it a try in restoring it. If you have any questions or comments, please post them in the comment section below and I will do my very best to get back to you. And as always, please like and subscribe to my videos and always remember, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. Have a great day.